like uh, uh, treating uh, arsenate waste uh, uh, dumps and this sort of thing to find organisms that are capable of tolerating that or in fact thriving on that. I'd like to introduce to you today the bacterium GFAJ-1. These are not little potatoes. They are a microbe that scientists lovingly call little bugs, but they're not bugs, uh, they're microbes. And this is a bacterium that although looks ordinary, and this may look like a, a type of micrograph many of us may have seen in different places, but it's doing something extraordinary. So we're looking at a map of Mono Lake, California. It's in Northern California, and east of the Sierras, just outside of Yosemite National Park. I had, I had been thinking about the idea of arsenic substituting for phosphorus for some time. So I, it was an absolutely directed test. The question I was asking was, can arsenic substitute for phosphorus in a living microbe? So I ran the experiment where we grew it in a broth, in a liquid, an artificial liquid, where we gave uh, the, the mud from Mono Lake as the initial source of the microbes, everything it needed except no phosphorus with a high dose of arsenic. So, um, I'm sorry if that was unclear. I, this was a directed search. And uh, for example, just going back to the bioenergy situation, one of the big problems that bioenergy schemes have is that if you make an algae or a cyanobacteria-based bioenergy system with regular organisms, it's pretty... Mono Lake is three times the salt of seawater, a peach of 10, it's basic, like bleach. And it's, it's got very high levels of arsenic. And it's teeming with life. So the seemingly inhospitable environment teems with life like bacteria and algae and brine shrimp and is a major stopping point for migratory birds on their, on their way through the United States. And we went to look for an interesting microbe and we went to an unusual place. One is exploration life as we knew, so expanding the idea of what life is and where it can be sustained. In the other now we're talking about an organism that we think if not replacing all of it, is it appears to be using another fundamental component of life. It, the story isn't entirely carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, the other elements we mentioned are important as well. It's replacing phosphorus with arsenic. This is a huge deal. With radioactive arsenic, there's also radioactive phosphorus. I would be looking at, for example, that band on the gel in figure 2A, the one in lane 2 with a box around it for those of you. Um, but some of the practical applications will develop over time to understand, well, here's the fundamental discovery. And you know, it, it's going to take an army of scientists, not, clearly not just myself and my team, but other, other people to bear on this problem with their tools and their ideas.